If you could use more motivation for your workouts, these seven Bible verses for Christian fitness are going to be a motivator for you. Listen to this episode, grab a pen, write these down in your journal or take a note out on your phone because you are going to reference them in the future. They are going to help you friend. Well, Hey there friend. Welcome back to the strong, confident, his podcast. This episode is going to fuel your workouts. I'm telling you, if you write these scriptures down or you come to my blog and, and screenshot them, this is blog 218, seven, 218, seven Bible verses for Christian fitness that will motivate your workouts. These scriptures that I'm going to share today are going to be a gift that just keeps on giving because don't we lose motivation don't we come to a point where we're just like, I'm tired. And if anyone else is living in this Arizona heat, like I am, can I get a fire emoji in the comments below if you're watching on YouTube, because it is so hot and maybe where you live is humid, but there's always something, right? It's always something, the weather, our kids, a flat tire, car issues, your alarm didn't go off. There is always a reason it seems like that we're not making it to our workouts or that it we, we are like, we're in this great stride, right? We've got this system going, we're in our routine. And then this something happens and we're like, how do I get back on track girl today? I am serving up a scriptural arsenal for you. So this goodness is going to be a gift that keeps on giving. Okay. Because as believers, our fitness journey is so much more than just physical exercise. It is a spiritual discipline that honors God because what we're doing is we're taking care of our bodies so we can steward our lives, right? Like you can't serve well and take care of other people. If you're falling apart, right? You're not going to go for those dreams and those goals that you have that God, that God gave you. If you are tired, unmotivated in poor health, like, let's just be real, right? So let me just share this, okay? By integrating scriptures, by meditating on scriptures while we work out and putting them in our workouts, praying before we work out, so we find motivation and strength way beyond our capabilities. So here are seven Bible verses that are gonna inspire and guide your fitness routine, turning your workouts into a form of worship. Okay, so get out that journal, that devotional, that note on your phone and go with me here, okay? And I just wanna say this, last week I did the seven uh, Bible verses for weight loss. Let me know if you're enjoying these seven Bible verses for this and for that. Tell me in the comments, write a review, please subscribe to the strong, confident, his podcast, because I can't do this alone. And you would not believe how encouraging it is for me to hear from you. I know that you might, some people tell me like, I feel like you're like my best friend. You, I feel like I get to hang out with you all the time. I work out with you, girl, if that's you, will you let me know? Because sometimes it can feel very, lonely doing what I do. And that is why I love my fit sisters in Christ so much. If you're not a fit sister in Christ, go to kimdolanletto.com forward slash sisters and join us because I love that I get to do life with you in there, coaching you, you know, answering your questions, having a community of Christ like Christ-minded women doing their fitness together. And we're all, you know, we all love Jesus and we're all on a fitness journey. And it is just so helpful to have that constant reminder through scripture, through community, through teaching and coaching. It's so good. Okay. So I just want to share with you though, that this podcast, I cannot believe is like four and a half years old. How have I been doing this podcast so long? And we're just new on YouTube. So go support the strong, confident, his podcast on YouTube too. If you're like a YouTuber, we're over there. I wanted to make sure I was doing videos for you as well, because so many of you are like, I want to watch the videos or some people are like, I want to read the blog. And some people are like, I want to listen. So girls, I'm showing up for you. Please show up for me. And, and if you love this, let me know. Cause it just, and share it because it just helps so, so very much. Okay. So here we're diving in. All right. I am giving you a PowerPoint. Okay. A fit God's way PowerPoint. Okay. Couldn't think of what else to call it. If you have something better, let me know in the comments, but I wanted to give you scriptures and I wanted to give you a first person like power thought that would just motivate you because I feel like the whole thing changes when you're like, Oh wait, God's talking about me. It's not just a bunch of words in a book. No, he's talking about us. The book is all about him teaching us how to live. Right. Okay. So let's go. Number one, I want to glorify God in my body. Girl, is that you? 
write down first Corinthians six, 19 through 20. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought, bought with a price. Therefore glorify God with your body, honor God in your body. Wow. Wow. Right now, this does not mean that you're supposed to turn your body into a perfection project or your workouts into that. But let me just ask you, how much better do you feel when you come to the end of the day and you've gotten in the word and you've worked out anybody else? I mean, that's what I created my whole fit God's way seven W's course from, right? The seven W's are the glue that's holding this mama together. And if you want to know what they are, head on over to fit God's way to find out. But let's just think about this. Our bodies are sacred temples of the Holy Spirit. When we take care of our physical health, we honor God and acknowledge the incredible gift of life he's given us. So let that verse remind you that every effort you put into your fitness is a way to glorify him. This flips the whole worldly fitness track on its head, right? Because it's not like, I'm not going to the gym to just look hot for a minute, right? So many, like, what's our heart motivation? God cares so much about our hearts. So yes, we want to look our best, be our best, do our best. But am I, tell me I'm not alone. Back in the day, I remember my fitness goals and journey all started because my dad was very ill. And then I felt terrified to get fitness. I was, or to get fit. I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot, you know, I want to do anything I can to not end up like him and have all these health issues. And we, we can't predict what's going to happen, but I just felt like I wanted to own my part in my fitness journey. But I saw, I mean, I'm just being honest with you. Okay. Just real talk for a minute, how easy it is to just slide into body idolatry, like that number on the scale, the number in your clothes, the fat calibers, the macros, the calories, like it can all turn into this very unhealthy thing that God is no longer there. God is not there. It's like your fitness goals are on the throne of your life and Jesus needs to be on the throne of your life. Okay. I did that. And I know I'm not alone. So please, if you're bold, let me know too, if that's you, you know, it's, it's very important that we realize that our bodies are vehicles for God. You know, we're the body of Christ. So is he using, he's using my voice to talk to you right now, to teach you about him. Are you supposed to be, what are you, what is your gift? What are you doing? Are you stewarding your health so that you can serve well? Fitness, fitness is stewardship to me. Workouts are worship right? So all of that just changes the whole thing, doesn't it? It's like, remove the scales from my eyes, Lord, just renew a right spirit within me. Amen. Okay. So our bodies, you know, they are sacred temples of the Holy spirit. So you're, it's like, you're taking care of what God has given you so you can use it for his glory, right? Just like with the casting of the crowns in the Bible, we cast the crowns right back to him. Amen. Okay. So number two PowerPoint, right? This is that, write this down. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Nehemiah 8.10. When you're in that plank and you want to give up, when you are in the car and you don't even want to walk through the gym door, when you drop your kids off and you want to drive by the gym and go straight home and take a nap, girl, drive to the gym. When you are like, eh, I worked out. I don't want to do the cardio or I, I just, I want to do my pushups for my knees. Wherever it is that you're allowing weakness to creep in and give your, you're, you're not giving it your all. You're just kind of there, or maybe not even really showing up. I want you to remember that the joy of the Lord is your strength. And that is why the devil is after it. Because if he can take your strength, if he can take your joy, he can take your strength. If he can take your health, your worth, he can take your future. Don't let him mess with you like that. Okay. Give that space, that territory back to God. All right. Nehemiah said, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have not nothing prepared. This day is holy. Nehemiah 8, 10. So good. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve for the, the joy of the Lord is your strength in all situations. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. And fitness isn't just about physical strength. It's also about finding joy in the process. Don't we just want to be like, okay, God, like, give me the right, you know, plan. Give me the right workout. Like we want that download. We want to see everything. And so often what pe what happens with people, you guys, this is kind of funny and not funny at the same time, but just listen to this. So many people are like, 
your program didn't work for me. You know, I started praying, but I still didn't lose weight. And I'm like, were you eating healthy? Like, were you eating whole God made foods? Were you working out? Were you following the seven P's? Were you doing the fit God's way? Like daily success plan where you, and they're like, no, I was just praying. And I'm like, so you were basically praying and thinking the weight was just going to fall off. Like Jesus isn't our next magic pill to weight loss. This, you know, the little like, oh, I'll just say a prayer and now this will happen. No, the, the, the joy in this is walking it out with God. Okay. It's haven't you ever real, like, have, have you ever realized that God wants us to do hard things? So choose your heart, right? I hear that, that quote a lot, choose your heart. You know, there's, there's two kinds of pain, the pain of staying the same and the pain of change. Let's go for the change. Let's be bold enough. Right. Okay. So let's go back to this. Fitness isn't just about physical strength. It's also about finding joy in the process. When we draw our strength from, from the joy of the Lord, our workouts become more fulfilling and enjoyable. Let his joy be the source of your energy and endurance. Hallelujah. Right. You see what I'm all amen, because there are just we're human. There are going to be days when you're like, I don't feel like it, but the joy of the Lord is your strength. There's something about that saying to me that just means like Paul said, whether I'm a base or a bound, whether I have a lot or nothing, I know that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, right? He's learned how to be content in any state, whether we want to do it or not, we do it because we know that everything in our lives runs better when we do. Amen. Okay. Three. I will discipline my body and make it my slave. First Corinthians 9, 24 through uh, 27. I'm going to read it to you. This is Paul saying, do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I will not be disqualified for the prize. Discipline. Okay. Disciples discipline. Do you see that? We are Jesus followers. We need to discipline our bodies. How often does your body just tell you what to do? Mine tries to tell me all the time. Like it is so hot in Arizona right now. I've been mentioning that a lot lately. You know, um, it's, it's like, if I, I know me, okay, you guys, I know me. And sometimes that's what we've got to do is like, Lord, reveal myself to me. Right. I know me. If I don't get up and get in the word and get my workout in girl, it ain't happening. So maybe you're like me and you just need to eat the, what is that saying? Eat the frog. My daughter says that all the time. I'm going to eat the frog, which means I'm going to go clean my closet. Like I'm going to go do the thing I don't want to do because I know I'll feel better all day long for doing it. So, all right. I mean, I don't know. I know that sounds kind of funny if you haven't heard that before, but let's look at this. Okay. Discipline is crucial in any journey, especially fitness. This verse emphasizes the importance of training our bodies with purpose and determination by disciplining ourselves. We can achieve our fitness goals and grow stronger in our faith. There's something about telling yourself, no, there's something about not feeding that flesh and it will die. What is that thing that you keep feeding? Like, is it excuses? I don't want to work out. Do you know how many people tell me, I'll work out once I get in shape, like I'm going to get in shape and then I'm going to go back to the gym. And I'm like, you get in shape at the gym. Um, and you're good enough now, girl, just put on whatever workout clothes you have put on a Christian playlist, drive yourself to the gym, get that workout in and rinse and repeat, pick your schedule, you know, set your goals in faith, create your fit God's way system. God is with you in all of this. Okay. Number four, this is a good one. Discipline yields fruit. I love the saying, be a fruit inspector. Have you heard that? Look at the fruit, you know, look at the fruit. When you do it, when you abide, like John 15, five says like that, he's the vine and we're the branches. And when we abide in him, like we have to abide in him because apart from him, we can do nothing. We're in that vine. So if you want to be like a piece of fruit that fell off the vine all by yourself, white knuckling your diet, doing it yourself. I'm trying to give you a picture here, white knuckling your workouts, doing everything in your own power. It's not going to work. 
I know that just sets someone free because I, can you see the picture? Like you're like, I have fallen off the vine. We need to stay. We need to abide, remain, right? Remain in me and I in you. If some translations say abide in me and I in you for apart from me, you can do nothing. But when we remain in God, when we abide in him, we bear fruit. All right. And that doesn't mean that you're going to get this perfect body or whatever. What I'm saying is that you're going to see discipline in your life. You're going to see, you're going to feel that Holy spirit, help you make better choices. You're going to grow and be stronger as a human being in all areas. Okay. So discipline yields fruit. And that's from Hebrews 12, 11. It says no discipline seems pleasant at the time but painful later on. However, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. How much better do you feel when you crawl in your bed at night and you're like, I got my workout in and I read my Bible. Like how much better does that feel when you chose those God made foods and you did the things, let's just say this, when you put your head on that pillow and you know, you did your best that day and took the best care of your, of yourself and your family, how much better do you feel than when you get in bed and you're like, Oh man, I haven't worked out in a week. I haven't gotten into the word. Like I'm talking about leading your life as a disciple, like following Jesus, taking care of yourself, getting in the word, getting, you know, praying, praying. I pray before my workouts. I've been praying so much lately that not only would God bless my efforts, but that he would protect my body. So many, think about all the things that can happen every day and how good God is that they don't. He is watching over us. You guys, we have a good, good father. Amen. You know, um, I I'm just, I'm like, I feel like the Holy spirit is just, I can hear this song all of a sudden playing in my mind. Have you heard the song? Um, everything's changed. When Jesus called my name, oh my gosh, that song is so good. Uh, it's like everything changed when Jesus called my name. I mean, it, he changes everything. And so that discipline that you didn't think you could have all of a sudden you're going to find, like, I never thought I could be a morning person. Now I get up at four o'clock in the morning. If you would have told me that 20 years ago, I would have said, you're crazy. It's never going to happen. So while discipline can be challenging, it ultimately leads to positive outcomes in every way. Remember that the effort you put into your workouts will bear fruit in the form of better health, greater strength, and spiritual growth. You will be stronger from the inside out. You will be more fit from the inside out. And I always go, go back to this with the definition of fit. Fit means well. Well, to be well in your mind, body, and soul. There's something about it. I'm telling you, it's so it's life changing. Okay, number five. This is my one of my very favorite scriptures. Okay, very favorite, very favorite. All right, Proverbs 31, 17. It's the scripture and the point, basically. But I want you to write this down. I will dress myself with strength and make my arms strong. Okay, I picture. For those of us who have insecurities, I don't know if I'm the only one. I mean, I've definitely surrendered it to God and I work on it all the time, but there are moments where I just, you know, I feel aged. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be 56 in December. I feel, uh, my body's changing, you know, and I realize that I need to dress myself, clothe myself in his strength, not my own. I, I, I work out to strengthen my body, but my strength comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Amen. So I want you to write down Proverbs 31, 17. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. That's a scripture. So Proverbs 31, 17 highlights the virtue of a woman who prepares herself with strength. Ladies in this world, we need to be so mentally, physically and spiritually strong. And that is what I teach in the strong, confident, his podcast. That is what I teach in the fit God's way, 30 day transformation course and fit sisters in Christ. And that is my mission is to help you dig your faith heels in and suit up for battle, put on the armor of God, show up every day, the mind of Christ, putting on his strength, you're clothed in his strength. Okay. I want you to think about that. And that is why physically disciplining your body to be strong is so important. It's a mind. I don't like the mind, body, soul. I feel like 
the whole yoga community and the people just use that love. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the joy of the Lord is our strength. We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. We will dress ourselves in his strength. Amen. Okay. Which is a beautiful segue to number six. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Write it down. I can do all things. What is your all things? I can go to work out three days a week. Fill that in. God, I can do this in your strength. It's a popular verse and reminder that our true strength comes only from Jesus. No matter how tough your life is, your workouts are, you can persevere in his power. Let that scripture be a reminder that you're so much stronger than you think you are. You have the power of God working in you, the, the spirit of God working in you. Okay. Number seven, I will make my workouts an act of worship. This one changed my life. Romans 12, one through two says, therefore, I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good and pleasing and perfect will. Those you can't, you can't deny it. It says offer your body as a living sacrifice. This is your true and proper worship. Okay. So transform your workouts into an act of worship by dedicating them to God. As you exercise, offer your body as a living sacrifice, recognizing that your efforts are holy and pleasing to him. This perspective shifts your focus from merely physical gains to spiritual enrichment, spiritual depth, spiritual strength. Amen. Okay. I I just want to share an extra bonus one because maybe it's my age talking. I don't know if any of you are like, wow, am I really going to be this age? But lastly, when I wait on God, he, re he will renew my strength. And that comes from Isaiah 40, 31, which says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings of eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Sisters, the word, the Bible is not quiet about our fitness, about our strength. Let's open it up. Let's dig into it. Okay. So in moments of fatigue and discouragement, I want you to remember that waiting on God and trusting him, he will renew your strength. He is the ultimate source of your endurance, of your vitality, right? So sisters, I just want to share with you that as you lean onto these scriptures, as you lean into them, let them inspire you. Keep them somewhere where, you know, I said, go to the blog and screenshot it, put, take out and while we were on this podcast, go back, write down the PowerPoints and the scriptures, hold on to them. Okay. Because integrating your, your faith into your workouts is going to achieve a harmonious balance between that physical, spiritual, and mental health. And it ultimately brings God glory in everything you do, because if you are so physically strong but spiritually and mentally weak, what good is that physical strength? It's when we bring it all together that we can serve God with our greatest power, him working in us. Amen. And I just want to share one last thing that like, I, I've shared this a lot before. I mean, I learned how to do a standing back tuck and land in a push up. I was so strong, but I cared too much about what other people thought of me. I was trying to do competitions and trying to look a certain way. And I just want us to die to that as Christian women. I feel so free now that I don't have to think about what other people are thinking about me because I know who God says I am. So I want you to draw your strength from the Lord. Maybe you're injured today and you can't really work out. Think about what you can do and, and work on that mental toughness. Jesus style. All right. Like get strong from the inside out, dress yourself in his strength, do what you can do. Put that workout on your calendar as a appointment with Jesus, put on a Christian playlist, worship him the whole time. Talk to him. God, I'm so thankful for this. I'm so thankful for that. Watch your stress come down. Watch your body change. Watch your life change. I'm going to pray for us. Father God, I pray for every woman listening. I pray that they know that the spirit you have given them, the Holy spirit to accomplish more than they could ever ask, think, or imagine that you, Jesus are with us in our every detail. 
when we're, you know, wanting to drive by the gym instead of go there or that workout class or take that walk, Lord prompt us, remind us that you want us to move our bodies. You moved your body every day. You walked everywhere. Jesus, we want to live like you. We want to be in our greatest health so we can serve you well. God, I pray for my health, for everyone listening. I pray for their health, that we would be healthy to serve you, healthy in our minds and in our bodies. God, help strengthen us for the work that you've given us, the task that you've given us. Bless the work of our hands and hearts. Father, bless our efforts, Lord. We long to serve and please you, God. Help us do it because the world is so loud, but God, we want to tune into you. We want to listen to you right now and remember that we can do all things in your strength. And I pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Sister, if you found this podcast helpful, will you please share it? I know, you know, a friend who's like, what do you mean you do this fitness thing through Jesus? Will you hit that share button and just tell her girl, these seven scriptures and these PowerPoints, you need to know them hit that share button, leave a comment, leave a review. If you haven't already on Apple, Spotify, or if you're listening on YouTube, I, it just like fills my cup when I get to hear from you guys, I just feel so, um, so blessed. And I read every comment. It just means so much to me because I, so what I do feel so alone. So it makes me feel like, Oh, these are my sisters and we're doing life together. So it would mean so much to me. And I just want you to know that you are, don't forget this. You are strong. You are confident. You are his.